Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft update video. We are currently looking at Snapshot 18W19A and the first change in the changelog on the Minecraft website says due to changes in world generation, worlds from previous snapshots will no longer work. Now that could be quite alarming so I would ask that we don't panic about this too much because it could suggest that old worlds won't be compatible with future ones it also doesn't really say a lot more than this right here which is relatively vague it doesn't go into specifics and the reason why now I suspect the reason why is because they may be fixing some of the problems with world generation if you have seen jungles they are overcrowded they cause a lot of lag um, for example igloos and strongholds they sometimes don't spawn structures in the world so there is a lot broken with world generation and there is a large bug list here um, of bug fixes and you'll see that I've highlighted two of them out of this large list and those are the ones related to the jungle biome so it looks like they are actually making fixes and changes to world generation which is one of the big things holding this update from uh, coming out sooner because there are lots of problems with world generation so let's go and load up Minecraft itself and let's go into single player because I have two worlds right here that will say version 18w19a now this one was made in I believe uh, 15 or 14a so it was made in an old snapshot and when I clicked play selected world the first time it took a very long time to load up the world it spent about two minutes preparing the spawn chunks and then it would finally load the world. Now interestingly enough, the chunks that you see around me are the ones that it took quite a bit of time to load and as soon as I would start to move, these chunks would be very slow in loading which I believe is why we have that message on the log. It is quite likely that this world will suffer because of the changes in the world generation. If they'll be able to fix that in the future or not, I don't know. But if you have been playing on the snapshots, this is one of the reasons why they are experimental and they constantly advise you to make backups and not to play uh, in permanent worlds on these snapshots because all sorts of things could be ahead of you. Now normally these chunks would load a lot lot faster so clearly there is something up with that but this world still seems to be playable to some extent. So now let's go and check out the live stream test world. This was in 12 point sorry yeah 12.2 no 1.12.2 geez numbers there's so many of them yes Minecraft 1.12.2 I copied it into this snapshot and uh, it loaded as quick as that. It was really quick to load. This is my testing world. It is also a flat world as well. So there is not a lot to do with uh, the world generation. There's all sorts of funkiness going on in this world by the looks of it. Parrots fighting vexes. Anyway, the point that I'm trying to make is that one random test world from 1.12 seemed to be loadable in this snapshot and the one from 16a as well so clearly something's going on but i can't really give you many more specifics than that now the next thing that i want to do is create a new world and go and find out if the jungle biomes have been fixed the speed of chunks generating in this snapshot feels a little bit ropey at times and the game just crashed wow this is why they're called snapshots peeps i was unable to reload the game i tried several times every time i opened the world it crashed so i've created one with the same seed again and here we are back at the jungle biome now you'll be able to see the landscape that this jungle biome is on because they have fixed the bug if you had seen it in the previous snapshots trees and bushes would grow absolutely everywhere and cover the terrain making these jungles very laggy now i've been hanging out in this area for a minute or two and it still feels herky-jerky so it's probably got a long way to go but they are slowly improving things and as well as improving things they are adding new features as well one of the things that i often have to do in a world is go look up a map of that world so you type slash seed and then you've got this long number that you need to copy and now that'll be automatically put onto your clipboard but the seed for this world is just one two three so when you click here it's going to put it in your chat apparently is that also on my clipboard no it's not so by clicking on there it just puts it in, in your chat makes it nice and easy for you to copy and then paste now usually seeds are very long numbers and they're not easy to remember which makes this a good feature so before we get to the big features in this snapshot, I want to go over one of the small changes. It says that seagrass will now spawn in underground caves. What we've got right here is a ravine and we can see that seagrass is actually sitting on top of the obsidian and so is some kelp as well. I've got to say it looks a little bit strange when it comes out of the obsidian of all materials, but just around the back here there are some of those underwater caves and you can see the seagrass here inside of them and it makes even more sense when you go into it like this does look like it's having some generation issues over there though, but now we're going to have seagrass in these waterlogged caves. If you're subscribed to the channel, which by the way, if you want to keep up with Minecraft updates, 
go hit that subscribe button. But if you subscribe with the channel, yesterday you would have seen that I posted a video on the Bedrock edition of the game. And they had some features that are now in this edition. However, not all of the ones in that update are in this one. For example, husks when underwater. Uh, don't get converted into zombies, which they do in Bedrock Edition. Now you'll notice that um, there are a few different creatures hanging out down here underwater, and usually what they do in water is they rise upwards, and if they're underwater for too long, they will drown. But undead mobs will now uh, happily exist underwater, and they will actually sink downwards. Um, so let's go spawn a stray, which is an undead mob. It will now sink downwards. Same for the wither skeleton. <laughs> it's kind of a funny sight, isn't it? Skeleton horse, a regular skeleton... Zombie pigman. Uh, the zombie horse actually goes upwards, which is strange. So that's not considered an undead mob or part of this. But in the Bedrock Edition, that one would also sink. Zombies we know will sink already. And then we have the husk, which I've learned doesn't get converted into a drowned. Because on the Bedrock Edition, the conversion time is the same. And this guy used to be a zombie. Uh, now, I did put down a skeleton horse. Here's a really cool thing. You can actually ride these skeleton horses. In the Bedrock Edition, you don't need it to be tamed or have a saddle. Uh, but in this one, you do. So I've summoned one in like this. And now I can get on this skeleton horse and I can travel around underwater. And I think that this is really fantastic. Uh, I said it in the bedrock video that I did yesterday. This is a really cool form of underwater transport. And this is also kind of a rare mob. A unique one to get in this game. And if you can get one and tame it, you can then use it to travel around underwater. And imagine <laughs> going along on your little skeleton horse through an underwater city. Oh, I just think this is going to be absolutely awesome. Okay, we're checking something else out here. Can you see the stray and the skeleton shooting at me? They don't do that in the Bedrock Edition. They actually attack you with melee damage. And that's something that was written in the change log. So I've got a feeling those changes are going to come to this update as well. But they're just not in here today. So I am learning that resistance will affect drowning damage. As I'm taking none at all. That is resistance level 6. And I'm not taking any damage from all the water that is in my lungs right now. I find that kind of curious. So in the daytime, skeletons will burn up. And of course they're now going to head to the water where they will sink and then live underwater. And so will the wither skeleton. At least it did on Bedrock Edition. It appears to possibly be doing so on this edition as well. Or actually maybe not. Um, because there used to be a bug where they would get set on fire for a tick. And it seems that in this edition they don't actually head into the water whereas in Bedrock they do. It's really fascinating to see the differences between the versions. Let's also try these out on these other mobs as well. Um, the zombie's going to burn, so it should go to the water. The husk doesn't seem to be bothered. So it kind of looks like the code is better implemented on this edition than Bedrock. Although that zombie... Dude, there's water right here. No, you're going the wrong way. So this item in my hand is the heart of the sea, and you need it to craft the conduit. Previously, there wasn't a way to get it in survival, but it's now found through buried treasure. And here is where there is some buried treasure, and you can see there is a heart of the sea inside of it and I believe that will always be there for every buried treasure chest so that's the way that you get hold of that item uh, in my hotbar you'll see I got a turtle egg this thing has been reskinned but that's only the item as you can see this thing itself is the same and also there is a new effect in the game called dolphin's grace but I've been unable to get it in survival I have actually been in survival mode uh, feeding this guy fish which only gets you love hearts at the moment and I haven't been able to get this dolphin's grace effect now when you feed them in bedrock edition um, they will actually lead you to treasure but that's not implemented on this one yet uh, but here's what I'm going to do I'm going to go back into survival and then I'm going to give myself the dolphin's grace effect and as we head off here what it's supposed to do is allow us to swim faster and the dolphin is definitely following me right that is so cool Okay, I've given myself water breathing so we don't have to worry about that. And I've upped the effect of Dolphin's Grace. Um, yet we seem to be swimming at the same speed. So let's take this to an extreme and go for level 50. Yeah, it makes you go a little bit faster, but it doesn't stack the looks of it. Let's have a looky here. In the change log it says, updated biomes to have new fancy names. Now, we don't want to go exploring a world, pressing F3, trying to find every single biome. That would take a very long time. 
I had a little bit of an idea. If we looked at the world type Buffett menu, that shows us all of the biomes in the game. Now, it could be that they haven't updated the list that we're looking at. And I just scanned through here and I couldn't see any biome names that had changed. So I will scan through with you just in case you've got a keen eye and you spot the ones that have been changed. But as far as I know, all of those are the same. I found some clarification here on Reddit, updated biomes, names that are notable, so there may be more added to this list. Uh, extreme hills become mountains, forest hills are wooded hills, Mesa is badlands, mushroom islands are mushroom fields. I mean, you can read all of this, right? Um, I don't mind them being changed, it seems a little bit unnecessary, but I think the names are a little bit more involved and tell you a bit more about the history of the land, perhaps. I don't know, that's just the way I interpret it. I feel like I should show you this. This is my super quick and dirty way of making a beacon base because as long as I put this roughly in the middle, um, it will actually make a beacon, right? <laughs> There's enough blocks there. There you go. And these things are now going to emit sound. So I'm going to turn up the game sound and see what we can hear. Okay, this is very cool. I'm going to start off by talking and then eventually I'll shut up. But this sounds very musical, but it's like a musical hum that emanates from the beacon. Ah, and it seems to be from just the base of the beacon, or the beacon block itself. Yes, this appears to be coming from the beacon block itself, this, this hum, which is really cool. Now, supposedly, they've done the same thing with the conduit, which is basically the beacon of the sea. So let's go and investigate that. I can hear something rather faint. I think what we need to do is build this thing up a little bit more. Oh, wow. It just kicked up a notch, didn't it? And then we kind of broke it by placing a block in the middle. Oh, wow, it's like a heartbeat. It's the heart of the ocean. Oh, there's like a ticking sound as well. So the more blocks you place around the outside, the more the power of this thing increases. It's gotten a little bit creepier, I think. The sound design is fantastic. Man, this is absolutely awesome. I am loving this right here. I could listen to that all day. So here in the changes list, it says that phantoms are now extra flappy. Let's go and have a look at these phantoms because they don't seem to be flapping their wings. I'm not sure what that's about, but notice how the egg now matches the color of the phantoms. That's pretty cool. Another thing to mention from the bug list is that XP will now flow upwards when it's not flowing towards me. I should get out of there. <laughs> so you can see the XP will find its way up to the surface like items would. And another thing to mention, if you press F3 and C, it copies your location to the clipboard, right? So if I paste it in, it's going to be able to let me teleport there nice and easy. But one thing to note is that it now includes what dimension you're in as well. So heading back to the website, I wanted to talk about some of the bug fixes. There are a heck of a lot of them in here. Um, there is a crash when you start with a custom resolution set. I'm so glad that has finally been fixed because it makes it easier to record. You don't have to resize your window. Um, you're able to summon lightning bolts again. That's something I discovered in a previous snapshot when recording. I noticed this one as well that you couldn't make Jeb Sheeps. It didn't change uh, the color and give you the rainbow effect. Um, you cannot shift click smeltable items into a furnace. That's been rather irritating if you've played a lot of survival Minecraft in these snapshots. Um, phantoms attack players in peaceful modes. Things like that seem to happen every time they introduce uh, a new mob, as well as them not dropping XP and, and things like that. Um, there's another one here. Zombies can destroy turtle eggs through a full block and a half above the eggs. So it's now going to be harder for those zombies to destroy the eggs. And pufferfish attack invisible players and creative slash spectator players. Uh, that is something rather humorous. I believe in Hardcore Hermit's impulse got poisoned when he was in spectator mode and that's something that I've noticed as well doing these snapshot videos. Um, here it says only players are poisoned by pufferfish. That might be a really big change because it means you could put a pufferfish in water underneath a carpet at the bottom of a mob farm and you would poison all of the mobs that land on top of it. So that could actually be something really cool for farming mobs, a new mechanic to work with. 
Um, then we have parrots don't imitate dolphins, phantoms, and drowns. Obviously, they're adding new mobs, and they need to update the list for uh, lots of other things in this game. Um, mobs can spawn on regular ice. This is something that I noticed if you were flying out at night over to some uh, frozen you know, uh, ocean areas, you might see some mobs on the ice. And good to hear that that is a bug, and that's actually the last of it. And that about wraps up this snapshot video, my friends. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, leave a like on the video. As always, thank you so much for your support on these snapshot videos. Stay subscribed to the channel if you want to keep up to date with them. I'll be covering some of the beta updates as well as these Java ones as well. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.